I'm in the big leagues. Tony don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Ayy, feelin' like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh. Send it through quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in the big leagues. Told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding a road, y'all. I think that I'm back in my bag now. So I need that go, y'all. Got hits when he throw in the fastball. Just too quick for it. Peeling off like the whip orange. Seen the effort this piss poor. I got too much. I got to What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Another Turnover. The basketball podcast where a basketball fan with zero basketball credibility gives his opinions on what's going on in the NBA. Opinions that nobody asked for. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Chris Aaron Murphy, a.k.a. A.A. Ron. And ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right in. Folks, we are in the midst of the very still early stages of the NBA season. And what an NBA season it has been so far. We are like four games in and there's already a lot of stuff to talk about so i am excited for this episode episode three of season three of another turnover so but before we get into the thick of the show i have to talk about uh some fun exciting things that's happened for another turnover over the over the past uh week or so uh so you know if you're a basketball fan you're probably familiar with Richard Jefferson uh played for the New Jersey Nets at the time for a long time won a championship with LeBron James in Cleveland well he is one of the now ESPN uh analysts or personalities or whatever you'd like to call it so uh, a buddy of mine sent me a TikTok from Richard Jefferson's page and he goes isn't that you and I was like what are you what are you talking about well on the video wall behind him was my face of one of the bold takes that I had submitted to uh NBA Today and it was on it was on the show I don't know if they actually showed my particular clip because I actually didn't see that episode because I you know was working but I was like whoa that's my face on ESPN so I can now say that my face and another turnover has been on ESPN how about that that was a that was pretty cool though uh you know to to see that I I mostly do this show you know as a hobby because you know I just love talking about basketball and I get to get all my basketball thoughts and opinions out to uh, multiple people at the same time. So uh, I thought that was, you know, pretty cool. But NBA Today uh, is a pretty prominent uh, NBA show on ESPN, uh, Malika, hosted by Malika Andrews. Rich Jefferson, like I said, is normally on the show. Kendrick Perkins, Big Perk, Zach Lowe, who I love. I love Zach Lowe's NBA analysis. Um, and Chene Ogumike, who is super talented as well. Um, but Rich Jefferson actually shared my reaction to... Uh, to myself being on ESPN to his story on Instagram, which I thought was great. So really cool exposure for another turnover. Uh, But another thing that happened earlier, just a few days before that, um, legendary basketball player and current uh, TNT commentator, Reggie Miller. So during the Lakers and Warriors game, that was opening night, actually, uh, you know, in the midst of the game, uh, you know, they mentioned another turnover in the context of the game. Well, I tagged NBA on TNT and Reggie Miller on Instagram, just jokingly is like, oh, like, thanks for the shout out, fellas. I appreciate it. Well, he looked at that story and I was like, what the heck? So why is he like, I mean, I know I mentioned him, but I, you know, I, you know, no expectations for him looking at it. So, so a couple of cool things have happened for another turnover over the past week, but I want to give a big shout out to everyone who listens and all the viewers and everyone who sends in, you know, uh, you know, feedback and participates. It really means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If another turnover blows up, we all blow up. (laughs) But all right, let's get into the show. Like I said, a lot of things have already happened in this very young NBA season. So let's talk about some of the the biggest surprises so far of this very early part of the season. So one of the big surprises that when I was taking a look and, you know, doing my research for the show, I was looking into the Utah Jazz and the Portland Trailblazers. They are both, and shout out to Jason, who was on my season premiere. Uh, so far, his bold prediction of the tra- of the Trailblazers is looking pretty good. But they are both 4-1 and one as of the time of recording. This is Thursday night I'm recording this. But they are both 4-1, and one, leading the Western Conference, respectively, 1-2. and two, One being the Jazz, two being the Blazers. Spe- specifically, when it comes to the Jazz, they've had some good victories. They beat Denver. They beat Minnesota. They beat the New Orleans Pelicans in overtime, who I've raved about last week before they eventually lost to Houston. I think it was last night, Wednesday. So, I mean, interesting enough. But 
this Utah Jazz team, I've been impressed. I've been impressed with what I have seen from them. Laurie Markkinen, um, averaging so far in this young season, 22 points, 8 rebounds. Um, Jordan Clarkson, averaging 18 points. You have six players currently averaging double figures for that Utah Jazz team. Now, this is all a surprise just because, you know, all the offseason moves that they had, getting rid of Rudy Gobert, trading uh, Donovan Mitchell, mostly getting a haul of picks from both of those teams, from Cleveland and Minnesota. Um, this screen, this season screamed tanking like the Utah Jazz were going to be bottom of the barrel worst team in the league you know gonna basically play for Victor Wembanyama uh at the end of the season but so far I know it's early but so far it does not seem to be the case for the Utah Jazz this I mean it's a small sample size but I I, I don't really expect them to be a playoff team I think you know it'll they'll kind of return to form just kind of similarly if you remember last year when the Washington Wizards were number one in the Eastern Conference like 20 games in and then they eventually trail off but I think it'll be a similar situation to that but impressive nonetheless with Utah Jazz I uh there have been a lot of funny memes though with Danny Ainge uh because he's the GM of the Utah Jazz now uh and Danny Ainge is like he's going to trade away this whole team if they keep winning so kind of funny how that works out because you know by winning they're losing per se because they won't have as good of a draft spot but it is what it is um but utah jazz big surprise so far but like i said the trailblazers as well um the blazers have had an incredible start to the season as well i have really been uh impressed with the the blazers team as a whole i mean i can't really say i've been impressed with damian lillard because i mean you know, Damian Lillard is that dude. Like, we know who he is. He's currently averaging 31 points, shooting 39% from three-point range. Uh, Anthony Simons, who I can't remember if he got a contract extension over the summer or not. But uh, but he's playing pretty well uh, as, you know, second fiddle to Damian Lillard. 18 points for him, averaging for these first five games of the season. But I really like their effort on defense. Defensively, they I, I would say they're better much better than they probably have been in the past that was always a knock against the portland trailblazers defensively they weren't great but i really like their effort um this year on defense you've got jeremy grant who's a pretty solid perimeter defender you said nurkic decent uh, uh on the low block in terms of uh perimeter defense or excuse me uh low block defense and then you have justice winslow shout out justice winslow former Duke player um who's also a pretty solid perimeter defender in the nba so I have been, like I said, impressed with this Portland Trailblazers team. Now, I had them missing the playoffs, you know, going in, and I had Damian Lillard requesting a trade sometime before the trade deadline uh, this com upcoming February. Now, w you know what would stop all of that from happening, obviously, is if they keep winning. So if they keep winning and they're in the top tier of Western Conference teams, Damian Lillard ain't going nowhere, at least this season. And, um, yeah, they'll, they'll be a playoff team if they keep up this pace. But the jury's still out on that. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm not, I'm not backtracking at all. It's too, way too early to backtrack in the season. So I'm still saying that the Portland Trailblazers will be on the outside looking in when it comes to the playoffs. But a big surprise nonetheless. But... Another surprise. Let's take a look into the the Phoenix Suns. So I know what you're probably thinking. You're like the Phoenix Suns. Why are they a surprise? Like they were they were the number one seed last year. But I really thought last year in the playoffs, the way that they lost, I really thought that was a franchise altering conclusion. Uh, you know, to the the NBA season for the for the Phoenix Suns last year. Just the way that they lost game seven, like completely demoralized by Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. I thought I was like this core of Phoenix Suns, you cannot recover from that. And obviously that was last season and we're in a new season now and the new season is still early, but I was like, oof, I do not think that they are going to recover from that. Uh, but they definitely made a uh, an early believer out of me um, in terms of how their season is probably going to go. They've shown some great grit, um, some incredible resolve. Uh, they beat Dallas um, in that you know season opener, coming back from like down twenty plus, just the same way they were down over twenty points in the playoffs. 
but they beat the Clippers, which I think the Clippers were without Kawhi Leonard in that game, if I'm not mistaken. But they also beat Golden State just last night, Wednesday night, um, beat Golden State after Klay Thompson and Devin Booker uh, got into it a bit. And Klay Thompson got his first ejection over 650 games and got ejected for the first time. I, I think he just kind of wanted a break. I think he was like, eh, I'm good. I'm good with this one. But um, I mean... They, they've been good. They've been really good. Uh, they won convincingly against the Clippers and Golden State. Devin Booker is actually, when I was taking a look uh, into the statistics for the Phoenix Suns, actually the fourth leading scorer right now in the early part of the season. 32.5 points, 48% from three-point range, which is incredible um, just because he takes a pretty good volume amount of three. So 48% is amazing, actually. Uh, now, I do think Chris Paul has shown a little bit more of his age in the early part of this season. Not shooting the best. I don't have his numbers pulled up here. Um, but overall... They look pretty good. Um, my biggest key for them is, and obviously this is going to be for a lot of teams, will they be able to stay healthy for a deep playoff run? That has always been Chris Paul's thing. You know, come playoff time, there's some sort of injury that causes him to miss games. I mean, I am of the firm belief during playoff time, you know, everybody's playing with some sort of injury, some sort of nagging injury that's causing them to limp a little bit, to grimace or whatever it is. But Chris Paul has unfortunately had numerous playoff runs where he has not been able to stay healthy, and it's been at the detriment of them winning, uh, winning a series. But unfortunately, we will not know until time will tell. But that those I was, I should say are some of the biggest surprises that I have seen so far in this young NBA season. But before we transition a little bit to the next segment, I got to talk about, you already know what's coming, got to talk about Leather Brain. So the NFL season is in full swing. And boy, is there a lot going on in the NFL. Now, you know, I, I mean, as me being a, being a huge NBA fan, I like the NFL as well. But the NFL has had its own fair share of storylines that have happened this year. I mean, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, trash. The Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, trash. My New York Giants, good. Like, what is going on? I mean, you got, you know, the Buffalo Bills and the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, two of the powerhouses. Who else is pretty good? I mean, you got the Cowboys who've played pretty well. The Eagles are still undefeated as of right now. But if you want to keep up when it comes to the NFL and fantasy football, you have to tune in to Leather Brains. If you want to get a step ahead of your fantasy football competition, got to tune in. This is the fantasy football podcast run by Hunter Slapdog Amoruso and Matthew Scotty Holt. Meyer. Listen, and they will take you on a journey between analytics and providing valuable insight along with laugh out loud commentary. Uh, trust me, it's a show you don't want to miss. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about football, but listening to them, they make it fun, they make it engaging, and they make it super entertaining as well. So tune in on YouTube or your favorite podcast app by searching Leather Brains with a Z and find them on Twitter at Leather Brains Today. But all right, let's transition. Let's go ahead and look into what I have not been surprised about so far in this very young NBA season, because there are some things that I'm going to talk about that you probably already know where they're coming, but I got to talk about them because that's what people like to hear. But let's take a look into the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers. Once two powerhouses or projected powerhouses, I would say, in the NBA just a few short years ago and so far having very, very slow starts to their season. Brooklyn currently sitting at 1-3 and three, and the Lakers at 0-4 with the worst record in the NBA. That is fact. That is not, uh, you know, hyperbole. They have the worst record in the NBA. But Brooklyn specifically, let's talk about Brooklyn first. Brooklyn has struggled offensively so far. Um, defensively, they struggled as well. That was kind of their Achilles. That's been their Achilles heel for the past couple of years, is they weren't great on the defensive end, even though they traded some pretty solid defensive players. But that's a story for another day. But Bruce Brown was a huge part of that team. I didn't really realize how. Uh, how much of a, a role that Bruce Brown had for that Brooklyn Nets team. And he is playing pretty well currently in Denver. He uh, signed with the Denver Nuggets in the offseason. That was a really good pickup for Denver and I think is a more 
of a of a bigger loss that the Brooklyn Nets um, probably anticipated. But he is definitely missed when it comes to this Brooklyn defense. But the Nets break three ha- really hasn't been the most you know efficient in these first five games of the season or first four games of the season. You know Kyrie Irving averaged 27 points per game, which is pretty standard for him. But shooting 45 percent from the field and only 21 percent from three point range, so not very efficient shooting the basketball so far. Um, Kevin Durant doing his thing points wise, 32 points per game, shooting 52 percent from the field, pretty solid. We expect that from Kevin Durant, only 31 percent from three point range, so a little bit lower than you know normal, but. Ben Simmons, the last part of their big three. Ben Simmons averaging 5.3 points, 7.5 assists. Give him kudos for that. 5.8 rebounds, only attempting five shots per game. Unfortunately, shooting 33% from the free throw line. Now, I got to give Ben, I got to give him some slack, you know, a little bit of slack. He's still getting back into the mix. You know, he missed all of last season with... Mental health issues, which I will never, you know, invalidate somebody's, you know, in good faith saying they have mental health issues. But he also had his back injury as well towards later on in the season, which was interesting but because he didn't play. But that's neither here nor there. But it does seem as if he's still kind of struggling mentally in terms of his on the court play. I don't know what's going on in that man's life or anything like that. So I don't I'm not speculating or projecting that. But the mental lapses in some of what in the games of what I've seen are a bit glaring. Like he just, he does not look to score the ball at all. Like it's really baffling and it's really weird because he used to in, in Philadelphia, he was pretty consistently getting you 18 to 22 points a night. Like, and I know he had a, obviously had a bigger role in the scoring department in Philadelphia, but he can score. He can, he was able to drive to the basket, get fouled and, you know, finish through contact, never been a great shooter. And that's, everybody talks about that, but I don't understand what has happened to Ben Simmons. Um, You know, it's, it's, it's just really weird. So um, like I mentioned last week though, if the Brooklyn Nets struggle through these first 15 to 20 games, I definitely think Steve Nash is fired. I think Steve Nash is gone if the Brooklyn Nets do not have a good start to the season. And so far, I mean, one in three, obviously not a good start, you know, uh, up until this point. They And they have a pretty tough schedule. Let me see here. Nets schedule. I should have had it pulled up. But they have a pretty tough schedule here coming up from what I've seen. They're actually playing Dallas uh, tonight, um, or excuse me, no, today. Um, that is Thursday night. But then they have, eh, they got the Pacers coming up. They've got the Bulls. You got the Wizards, the Hornets. So, I mean, not as tough a schedule as I thought over the next week and a half. But still, teams that could give them problems. And they, they could slide down to, you know, they're 1-3 in three right now. They could be 1-6, in 1-7 in seven here coming up if they're not careful. But I, I really, like I said, this, with Steve Nash, though, I think if they don't play well, I think he's gone. He may not be the right guy for the job. I personally didn't think he was the right guy for the job when he got hired, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, this Brooklyn Nets team, not really a surprise that they've struggled just with all some of the new pieces that they have. New piece being mostly Ben Simmons and a little bit of Kyrie Irving too, because obviously he missed a bunch of time last year, but we shall see. We shall see what happens with the Brooklyn Nets. But like I mentioned earlier, not another not so big surprise at all, or not a surprise, I should say, was the Los Angeles Lakers. I know I talked about them last week. I talked about them on the premiere. Probably going to talk about them every show because the Lakers, I mean, who doesn't love to hate on the Lakers, right? Am I right? Am I right? Come on. <laughs> but as constructed, this Lakers team is going nowhere. At least in my opinion, they're not going anywhere. I can't even say that they're going to the lottery because they don't have any draft picks. So they're not even going to the lottery. If they're just bad, they're bad. Like there's, there's no other way to the sugarcoat it. They don't have any draft picks until 2027 and 2029 which they do not want to trade away which i don't blame them because it's you know future how much time left do you got with lebron and russ and ad which it probably not going to be very long at all but um you know bron and ad on the court really have been your mostly your only bright spots in terms of on the court play i mean they've mostly been doing their thing Give or take some efficiency with their shooting, but LeBron is averaging 25 points, 10 rebounds, nearly eight assists so far in these first four games. So, I mean, playing well, shooting 45% from the field, only 25% from three-point range, and he's been taking a lot of threes. Like, I think it was, I can't remember what game it was, but he was like one of eight. 
another game he was like two for seven or something like that so he's never been a consistent like knockdown three-point shooter he could hit him but i mean he's not a he's not going to get you nine for 13 or 10 for 16 from three-point range like someone like steph curry that's just not who he is but anthony davis averaging 24 points nine rebounds three steals and two blocks actually leading the league in steals plus blocks combined which is pretty good pretty solid but only shooting 18 percent from three-point range which is pretty bad but you know they've been those two have you know been successful for the most part for this lakers team so that is your one silver lining but the most successful lebron teams lebron led teams that we've seen are the ones that had what things they had perimeter shooting and they had mostly i would say above average defense i mean you can see those teams in miami those those dudes in Miami, they used to be lock, be able to lock teams up when they wanted to. Um, they had abundance of shooters. Your Ray Allen's, your Mike Miller's, your I mean, shoot, Chris Bosh could hit outside threes. Who else was on that team that could, that could hit threes pretty well? I can't think of any right now, but they had some solid shooters. Even Cleveland, you know, Kevin Love was a pretty great three point shooter. Uh, you know, Kyrie Irving is pretty good three point shooter as well. Not your traditional spot up, but you had quite a few. Uh, you know, members on that team who would be able to shoot the ball and open up the full the floor for LeBron James. But this Los Angeles Lakers team doesn't have either of those. They have they they have no consistent knockdown three point shooter at all. Like one guy who could be like, all right, he's the guy who's going to knock down most of the threes. They don't have that at all. I mean, their defense is below average, and that's being generous. I know I talked about that last week, but they are currently i know it's early i know i'm gonna keep saying that it's early but they're worse than the sacramento kings statistically and that's terrible because you know the last time the sacramento kings were good it's when chris weber was on the team i was like eight years old that was the last time the sacramento kings were relevant in any stretch of the imagination so this los angeles lakers team it's it's pretty embarrassing because i mean the league is i'll, I'll admit the league is better when the los angeles lakers are good but this 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 is this is pretty bad. This is kind of hard to watch, but I'm low key enjoying it. But I think the only way out of this mess before it gets even worse, and it's bad right now. But the Lakers they really have to try and explore any and all trade possibilities, and I mean any and all trade possibilities. That is, you know, obviously Russell Westbrook is an obvious one. Expiring contract, forty seven million dollars is what he's owed for the season. Uh, I mean, Anthony Davis, you could try to potentially move him. He's injury prone though. So I don't really know who is going to be willing to shell out too many assets for an Anthony Davis who, you know, hasn't played a full season since God knows how long, uh, LeBron J LeBron James is obviously older and, you know, aging, still effective, still probably put him top 15, uh, players in the NBA right now, but you know, he's just older. Father time is, is creeping up on him and it, it catches everybody, but I know Rob Palinka, the GM, president of basketball operations, one of the two, just recently got extended, uh, but he's clearly not a roster builder. I mean, the young pieces that they had already had uh, in, in when they won in 2020, I mean, it wasn't really much of his doing overall. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I don't think Jeannie Buss is going to let Rob Palinka go, but I mean, I wouldn't be mad if she did that, but I doubt that's going to happen. But like I said, they won the title in the bubble in 2020. You know, you achieve the ultimate goal when LeBron James goes anywhere. His ultimate goal is been a championship. He's won championships everywhere he's been. You know, uh, won Miami, his second stint in Cleveland. Obviously, won in the second year for the Lakers. Yeah, second year being for or playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. But the goal is achieved, so it's probably best overall for the Lakers' future if they cut their losses, make some trades, and see what they can do with this roster. But We'll see. I mean, if they want to just keep being bad, I'm fine with that. The Spurs have a better record than them. Spurs are three and two, baby. Let's go. <laughs> but all right, before we wrap up here, uh, we got to talk about the marquee matchups. I appreciate everyone who has participated and played. Marquee matchups are super fun. Remember, the best record by December 12th will win a $50 Fanatics gift card. You can vote on the marquee matchups every week, uh, every Friday, either on Twitter or Instagram stories, you can email me at another turnover at outlook.com. All of the methods are on my social media platforms. So feel free to vote. Um, this week, we're going to do something, something a little fun. 
games are going to be worth double this weekend. So instead of two points each for every correct game, it'll be four points each. So I'm excited. So we've got, well, last week, let me talk about last week. We had Denver beating Golden State, Cleveland beating Chicago, and Phoenix beating the LA Clippers. Uh, only game I got right was the Cleveland Cavaliers beating Chicago. Um, Denver had a really good showing. Uh, I think they they played in uh, Chase Center in San Francisco. And then Phoenix beat the Clippers. Like I said, I believe they beat them without uh, Kawhi Leonard. But still, pretty solid. But this week's matchups for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have the Dallas Mavericks taking on the Brooklyn Nets. You got the Atlanta Hawks taking on the Milwaukee Bucks in a rematch of the Eastern Conference Finals from 2021. And then you have the New York Knicks taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I am going to go ahead and go with the... I'm going to take the Mavericks. Yeah, I'm going to take the Mavericks to beat the Brooklyn Nets on the road. I think uh, Christian Wood, Luka Doncic, and Spencer Dinwiddie are all going to give them problems if they obviously all play. And then I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the Bucks to beat the Hawks at home. And then I'm going to go with the Cavs to beat the Knicks on the road. Knicks have been undefeated at home, but they, I mean, they're three and one right now. They haven't really beat any good teams, but so this will be a good test for Sunday against a pretty solid Cleveland Cavaliers team. But that's what I got. I've got Mavericks, Bucks, Cavaliers. Like I said, be sure to get your votes in for a chance to win that money. But anyway, folks, that is all the show I have for you today. I appreciate you. Like I always say, like, share, subscribe, leave comments, do whatever it is that you want to do. Do whatever makes you happy. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you watching if you're on YouTube. So exciting slate of games. I am very much looking forward to what's coming up. But I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Take care. And I will see you next week. Just too quick for it, peeling off like the whip orange. Seen the effort, this piss poor. I got too much, I gotta tend to. Car 